Okay, hey everybody, this is Alex with Care Conscious. I am um, here today and we're going to talk about communication impairments, the common ones we see in seniors and what that means for us as caregivers. And I'm here today with Mara Silverman. She is the founder and senior advisor to the Triangle Aphasia Project here in North Carolina. Uh, and we're also here with her brain. So we're going to talk about the, the main categories. What, what are the main categories of communication impairments that we see in seniors? There are a lot of communication and cognitive impairments that can occur as we age and with um, diagnoses that mm -hmm. affect the elderly. So we can put those into communication problems that have to do with language impairments such as aphasia. You can have cognitive impairments, difficulty processing, understanding information right. and remembering. We might have problems with um, motor speech, difficulty producing speech and um, hearing and swallowing. These are all areas wow. of cognitive communication impairment. You don't think about hearing usually in, when you think about an impairment like that. Yeah. That's interesting. So what are the the causes or the diagnoses typically associated with what we're seeing functionally? Well, there may be many causes. You can hear Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and aphasia, stroke related um, difficulties, but really it's finding out where the area of the brain was okay. affected and how that results in a communication impairment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've heard the term neuroplasticity mm -hmm. uh, in college. I know what that is, but a lot of folks might not. Tell us, what does that mean and what does that mean for someone with a communication impairment? This is a positive thing that we hear when we talk about neuroplasticity, and it's only in recent years that we've talked about it with the elderly in mind, is that the brain can rewire itself. So individuals that have difficulty with language, for example, which is mainly in this left hemisphere, can do things oftentimes like sing or um, use melody to help right. them get speech because it's using the other side of the brain. The main point of neuroplasticity is if you don't use it, you will lose it. Wow, remember that one. Um, so Marm, what can we as caregivers do to help prevent any communication impairments that might arise with our care recipient? Well, certainly we can't, um, you know, prevent a person from having dementia or Alzheimer's if it is in their family. But we can certainly do things to be aware of the signs of mm -hmm. stroke, um, of making sure that the person doesn't fall, you know, so that they can, um, preventing falls can help prevent brain injuries. So there's certain things that we can do to protect the environment, but we're never going to do anything to prevent a communication problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What well, what would you say, given that, what's the main thing caregivers should take away from this dialogue for, for their care recipient who has or might have a communication impairment? I would say the number one thing is to keep the person involved, keep the person active. I heard a study very recently that Harvard did where they talked about social interaction being the one most important feature in keeping people attuned and and really cognitively astute. Mm -hmm. So I would say keep the person involved and if you need to modify their environment go ahead and do that. But let them you know be involved in their shopping and in their bills and in their decisions that they make daily and in community social events. Social interaction is key. Right. So engage, 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 engage. and then keep on engaging. That's right. So thanks Mara thank and you. thank you guys pleasure. for tuning in. See you next time.